who are here today have in one way or another formed a uh, connection with the Kanawha uh, Kaju uh, tradition. Some of you actually met the 6th of John Kanawha uh, when he visited uh, this city or in other places. But in any case, you've all somehow uh, formed a connection with this tradition. I therefore regard all of you as disciples of the same guru as myself and as possessors of the same uh, Samaya as myself. About me, I do not regard myself as anything special. I think that as far as what I possess, I possess every imaginable fault. But through the blessings of my root guru, at least I'm able to recognize my faults and also to maintain the basic motivation of bodhicitta. As for the Dharma, as you know, it is not only profound, it's also extremely vast. There are so many instructions, so many practices. It seems it would be impossible for anyone to practice them all. This can be bewildering and even off-putting. But if you look closely at the meaning of Dharma and at the function of all of its many profound instructions, you'll observe that all of these systems, all of these teachings, all of these instructions have one single purpose. The purpose is to point out the mind's nature and enable disciples to work with that once it has been recognized. Therefore, in spite of the vastness of the teachings, if an authentic guru and a qualified disciple can meet one another and communicate, then tremendous things are possible, as we see in the life and example of Jitsun Milarepa, who in such a way achieved the state of Vajradhamma, the state of great unity in one life and one body. My root guru's intention has always been to bring beings to liberation. The motivation behind all of his activity has always been bodhicitta. I therefore think it's important that we try to uh, conduct ourselves in line with this, implement this, and, and practice this. About our training, we have a saying, the sign of having heard the Dharma is to be uh, gentle, and subdued. And the sign of having meditated is to have a few or no pleasures. This means that even through hearing the teachings, we should start to calm down. If the more we learn about Dharma, the more we hear, the more we read, we become more and more arrogant, more and more rigid. Our pleasures grow, our desire grows, then something's gone wrong. The more we listen to the teachings, the more Dharma books we read or study, the more <coughs> gentle we should become. Gentle in our minds, gentle in our speech, and gentle in our physical conduct. And this means that we are studying properly and getting closer and closer to Buddhahood. This, therefore, is my prayer, my aspiration, and my hope. Otherwise, if with every step we take on the path, our clashes become more and more coarse, our behavior becomes worse and worse, then we are walking backwards on the path. It's also said the sign of, of having meditated is to have few clashes. This means that as I mentioned last night, what we are dealing with in working with our minds in meditation practice is the problem that our minds have become overpowered by ignorance. That ignorance is the source and origin of all of our questions. And as time goes on, ignorance reinforces itself, entrenches itself ever deeper. And so as time goes on, there's the danger that unless we remedy ignorance, our behavior will also get worse and worse. So 
as we receive instruction and practice, our kleshas should become fewer and fewer if meditation practice is working properly. Therefore, if this happens, if your kleshas diminish as you continue to practice, that is excellent. And this is my hope for all of you.